Hey guys, D Mike here for another episode of Super Nintendo Sundays. We're doing kind of a an interesting game here. You'll see what it is in a moment. This game is very uh, very anime. If I could describe it like that, it's very 90s. And this is actually a game that was only released in Japan. So a very dedicated team of translators went through and gave us this gem. I actually found this one just doing a Google search for platformers to play. And this is a, a really popular one that seemed to be engaging for the Japanese community. And I wanted to give it a try. I'm not trying to stick to like just platformers on this channel, by the way, but um, I think they're fun. They're easy to do. And this is kind of a off the beaten path one. I don't know how popular this one was in Japan, but I guess it unfortunately did not make it stateside where I am. But we have it now, so we're going to play it and we're going to have fun. Seems like this young fellow has run into some trouble with some with this demon who has seemed to capture his friends. And he is going to uh, assert himself into the situation and take care of it. So welcome everybody to Do Re Mi Fantasy Mylon's Millen's Milton's quest. I don't know. Whatever. Choose however you want to say that. But yeah. So let's go ahead and get started. This game is very weird and that's why I like it. I think it's kind of fun. It's very cute. Once again, cute aesthetic this time around. If you don't like cute games and you can uh, don't let the door hit you on the way out. This one's pretty fun though. It's very simple. And, uh, yeah. You have a bubble blowing power. You can use those to kind of stun your enemies. And if you bump into them, it knocks them off the map. You can also jump on enemies too, but I'm a little wary of that when I play this game. The reason being is that it's kind of unforgiving. For a game that seems so cute and silly and fun, it is kind of brutal. So the way that this works is, in his current state, Mylon, Milton, Millen, Melon, he only has the ability to take one hit before you lose your life. So that's kind of brutal, but there is a way around that that we'll see in a moment. So in this game, for whatever reason, there are like overalls that you can collect and in doing so, that gives you another hit. So Red Millen, Mylon, Melon, is one hit and you're done. Blue is two and you're actually able to get up to a third stage, which gives you two hits. So that kind of takes a a um, ghouls and ghosts kind of thing, kind of approach where or ghosts and goblins, I don't even remember, whatever that game is, the really hard one where you die real fast and it's got frame rate issues, that one. The, uh, the aesthetic here, or sorry, the mechanic here is kind of the same way where you can collect armor. That's essentially what this is for our main character, our hero here. Collecting armor will allow you to take multiple hits and not die right away. So that's nice. Because if it didn't have that property, this game would be brutal. I mean, it is it is already brutal, but yeah, you just have to be very careful. So collecting a second pair of overalls gives us the kind of Link-esque appearance. That's two hits now, so that's very nice. This game is very silly, very fun. I was playing it, testing it a few weeks ago, and I had no clue what I was doing. And I still don't, to be honest. That's kind of the full disclosure I like to give whenever I play some of these games is, for the most part, I've never played any of them. So, and especially this one. Like, I don't, I don't even think I've ever met anybody who has. So, if you have played this game, please let me know in the comments below. That's interesting, or wherever YouTube displays comments now. Maybe you're watching this 50 years in the future. So, yeah, I'm going to just take it easy, have fun with this one. That's kind of the theme of this round, is we're going for very cute, very kind of fun, whimsical, silly. And you'd think that, like, this round of games would be easy, too. I mean, Yoshi's Island isn't really an easy game, I don't think so. It's a well-made game, and it does have some intricacies that do make it kind of tough. Kirby's Adventure is probably the easiest of the three. That one's not too tough, but then again, I say that as somebody who is, if you've seen that episode already, 
not super adept at it. So we didn't do too well, but that's okay. We're all just having fun here. We're just trying to get to the goal, the finish line of life. Actually, that sounds kind of morbid. Maybe we're not doing that. Maybe take your time. Life's a marathon, not a sprint, you know? Words of wisdom from D Mike plays on Super Nintendo Sundays, but you never thought that would happen. So, I don't really have any like foresight into how this game is played. I can't really tell you like, oh, upcoming is this and this mechanic does that. I really don't know. I can only really give the information as I encounter it because this is I'm this is a completely blind run. So it is what it is. But I do know that Mylon loves candy, bubble gum in particular. That will give you kind of a I mean, I, I should, I'll just let you see it right here. When you fall off the edge, using the bubble gum will bring you up into the air and kind of save your bacon. You need to keep moving, though, because if you don't, then that happens. So don't be a ding dong like me. But hey, you know, even in our demise right there, we did wind up with a very nice amount of music notes. So that's good, right? Getting a hundred of those will net you a life. And what's nice is that you do start back from the beginning, but the candy that you collect will infinitely respawn. So you can go back there, you can grab it again, still have access to it for when you have a little bit of a heads up of what's coming and you're not a ding dong that falls into pits like me. The platforming in this game is pretty good. It can be kind of hazardous at times and Without muscle memory of what you're doing, it can be a little tricky because that will happen. So you have to just, you know, play the game enough, I guess, to know where things are going to be. That's the same pretty much for every game, but the downside is that this game is unforgiving. So you only get two lives when you start. Before you pick up any extra pants, you can only take one hit. So this must have been one of those games that when they made it, way back when they assumed that for whatever reason there's like this strange kind of rift this dichotomy of how gameplay is produced for like the japanese audience versus the north american audience where games for japanese exclusives for some reason are just harder in certain instances okay so now we've got green pants we're doing great thank you for that there's a little exploring to do in this game too, which I think makes it kind of fun. It's not quite so linear. It's obviously still just your left or right platformer, but you can take your time and play around a little bit and have fun with that. It's nice. Break down, break down some bricks, try to find extra music notes. 100 gets you a life, like I said. But yeah, going back to my point, I think it's interesting that certain games, when they're made and then they're ported to an American audience or a European audience, for whatever reason, those games are made easier. I don't know why. And I don't think, you know, nowadays it's probably not done that way because games released in America and Japan are relatively the same in terms of how widespread the accessibility is. You know, back in the day when you had your Mario's and your, um, you know, the games like that, it was, it was easier to assume that the American audience wouldn't have had, you know, experience with it. Games were coming out in Japan a lot sooner than America, or just, I should say, the Western audience. And that led to them kind of ramping them up. So, you know, the, the Japanese audience would get something. The, the freshest example that comes to my mind is the, is Mario 2, the Japanese Mario 2, the lost levels that we eventually got in the All-Stars compilation. So it's just those kind of thoughts of how back in the day, the assumption was that the American Western audience was too green, too novice to be able to handle, you know, tough games like your Mario's and your Do Re Mi fantasies. So I don't know. I think it's an interesting approach and there's probably documentaries out there that kind of reinforce what I'm saying. So apparently we collected some sort of weird invincibility sphere that we have temporarily here. There's parts of this game where I just have no idea what's going on. And I think that that's kind of what makes it fun. 
You know, I'll get stuck in places like this multiple times because I just cannot figure out what I'm doing. This is a game that's definitely reliant on trial and error. And being pretty careful with your jumps and with, you know, hitboxes like that being very sensitive. There's actually a really uh, special moment that we'll all see before too long. This game doesn't pull its punches, which I think is interesting. And because I don't know all the mechanics of this game, there's going to be moments where you'll be watching this and you'll be screaming and you'll be like, you know, d what are you doing? Like, that's not what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, yeah, that's 100% accurate. So, I'm just doing the best I can. I'm just having some fun with, with Melon, with Melon on his adventure. Trying to rescue Tinkerbell from the clutches of Skeletor or whatever that demon was. This game is definitely a weird one, especially when it lets you use launch pads right into enemies. So that's pretty uncool, if I do say so myself. But you gotta be mindful of that, because the game is not going to be very forgiving. Definitely look out for music notes, collecting as many of those as you can. There are certain instances in the game where it just kind of throw you a bone and it'll give you a room of kind of peace where you can go and collect your your music notes, but there's going to be some where it kind of challenges you to get some that are a little more tricky. And those ones, you know, you can try to get them if you want. It's like a little carrot on a stick, a little challenge. Now there are things, these collectibles, that you are seeing me miss over and over again. Now the reason for that is because there are gimmicks in this game moves that I don't know yet. I'll figure them out eventually, but I didn't, I forgot to get the manual with this one, so I don't quite know all the fun little doodads, but yeah, that's an example of music notes that you can get that are a little tricky. You have to jump out of the, out of the cart here carefully, or you'll send Melon plunging to his too soon demise. But yeah, it's just, I don't know. Overall, this is just one of those games that's very silly and simple. And, you know, it has a very kind of whimsical, cute, cartoony aesthetic. It makes me think of like 80s, 90s cartoons, like maybe, uh, you know, like an anime type of thing, like a Studio Ghibli Miyazaki type of thing. That stuff, that's what I think about when I play this. That's why I think it makes it fun. But the downside of this game is not knowing how to do everything is there are moments where I will find myself getting stuck. So I'll have to try to work my way around that. I am always resourceful. I've kind of penned myself as a bit of a problem solver. So I'll work through any issues as I am attacked by the government here. These little areas, I completely glossed over the one that I did already, so I'll bring this up. These little areas sometimes will turn into mini games, which I think is fun, or they'll just wind up uh, having tons of music notes, which is great because this gives you the opportunity to kind of restock your collection and you know, you'll even wind up with some candy. So who doesn't love candy? This is just kind of like a nice little breather room. The first one was a mini game. I didn't even talk about it at all. Kind of like a little duck hunt situation where you have to shoot the birds out of the air, and in doing so, you will get bonus points that mean something, I guess? I don't know. But once again, not knowing the mechanics of this game too, super well, I got a little hung up on this spot because I wasn't entirely sure what you're supposed to do to break bricks above you. So you can use the bubble and the bubble gum to save your bacon here brings you back up. It's kind of nice. That would have been a death, but instead we are saved and uh, yeah, you're kind of stuck here because your your bubble that is your basic attack is only a lateral move. can go left and right. You don't have any way to attack vertically with that yet. So, or ever. I don't know. I haven't played more than this, so you're just seeing exactly what I know. But thankfully, there is a way. And if there's a will, there's a way. Just take a moment, think about it, press the button and hold it, and Mylon will unleash 
his furious extra strong bubble attack. So there you go. That's that. So that was four-ish episode or levels in this episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed yourselves. And we'll come back at it next time in a few weeks with some more Do Re Mi Mylon's adventures. So thanks for watching, everybody. I've been D Mike. I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.